Welcome to our second video on hyperbolic paraboloid vaults. In the previous video, we generated the hyperbolic paraboloid by sweeping a parabola through space along a parabolic path. In this video, we're going to write a formula for the vertical coordinate y in terms of the horizontal coordinates x and z. As a quick refresher, Previously, we generated one parabola with the formula y equals minus kx squared. Then we duplicated it through a 90 degree angle to produce a second parabola, y equals minus kz squared, which we mirrored about the y equals zero plane to produce the parabola y equals plus kz squared. The y equals plus kz squared parabola was duplicated and displaced multiple times in the positive x direction and the negative y direction by appropriate distances to land the duplicated parabolas on control vertices on the original y equals minus kx squared parabola. In other words, we take this parabola and we replicate it once to take it to that point, again to that point, and again to that one, and so forth, all the way down. We can then mirror those new parabolas to produce this shape. Then we can take the original, or we did take the original, k equal, y equals minus kx squared parabola, and replicated it several times in the negative z and positive y direction. So in other words, we're going to take this parabola and replicate it up to here, then up to there, then again up to there, and up to there, and so forth. And we're going to snap it to these control points on this parabola, which is the y equals plus kz squared parabola. When we get done with that, we have these new parabolas which can then be replicated or, excuse me, mirrored about the z equals zero plane to produce the hyperbolic paraboloid. Now that was a whole sequence of steps that took quite a while, 10 or 15 minutes. If we go back, we will observe that there were two generative parabolas, y equals plus kz squared and y equals minus kx squared. So this formula goes with this parabola that formula goes with that parabola. The two planar equations can be combined into a single 3D equation where y is equal to plus kz squared minus kx squared. So when x is equal to 0, we get y equals plus kz squared, which is what we expect. This is the parabola at x equals to 0, which is the original parabola that opens upward that we started with. Likewise, when z is equal to 0, y becomes minus kx squared, which was the other originating um, parabola. Now we combine those together into a single equation which describes all the points on this surface. In plan view, the hyperbolic paraboloid projects on a horizontal plane as a grid of small squares within a larger boundary square. This is what we expect since all the original parabolas were in vertical planes, and therefore those parabolas project down as straight lines on any horizontal plane. We could go into Excel and generate the coordinates of each of these points. We could then transfer those coordinates into multi-frame as the coordinates of vertices and then snap members between all the adjacent joints. However, there is a much simpler way to do this in multi-frame. We're going to generate the hyperbolic paraboloid by using the grillage tool in multi-frame augmented with a 3D formula, y equals k times z squared minus x squared, numerically processed in Excel. So first of all, we're going to go to multi-frame and we're going to explore the so-called grillage tool. So you'll notice up here 
something that says generate grillage. We're going to click on that and we're going to put some numbers in here. So previously we had a bay width of four feet. Uh, we had a frame width of four feet. Um, we had 16 bays. And now we need 17 frames to create 16 spaces between them. And I'm going to eliminate all these uh, restraints. And that's what we end up with. So this is incredibly simple. We didn't have to go to Excel. We didn't have to generate a bunch of points. We didn't have to transfer those points back to multi-frame. And in fact, multi-frame has generated all the joints and all the members for us already. Uh, just to check, we're going to see this point right here is x equals 64. This one is z equals 64. So the one thing we'd like to do is we'd like to lasso all of this, or we could hit control all, and we're going to move it so it's centered on our coordinate system. So we're going to say, we're going to move the selection uh, minus 32 feet, minus 32 feet, and the 16 was left over some, from some previous exercise. So now when I hit control total, or control T, I see that I have these coordinates as 32 and 32 for X and Z, and these are minus 32 and minus 32. So I have the grillage I want. I can now go to my data window, and you'll notice that it gives me the coordinates of all these joints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to say copy. I'm then going to go to my Excel file, and I'm going to paste all those in. And now I have all my X and Y coordinates. I don't have, excuse me, my X and Z coordinates, but I don't have my Y coordinates because the grillage was originally constructed in the Y equals zero plane. But what I can do is I can now construct this formula. I've written it up here, uh, where Y is equal to K times Z squared minus X squared and k, you'll recall, is d divided by l over 2 squared. So that gives us a depth d when we're at the extreme ends of the hyperbolic paraboloid, where one or both of the variables are l over 2. So we're going to implement that formula. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to type equals. And then we're going to say, here's our k value worked out. And then I'm going to put a parenthesis, and I'm going to say z star z, which is z squared. And then I'm going to say minus x star x. And I'm going to close the parentheses. And now I have to figure out what I did wrong with my formula. Uh, I needed to put a star there to indicate that it's multiplication. So that point is zero, um, which is fine. Uh, we want to check it is F3 is K, C3 is Z, A3 is X. So our formula is correct. Uh, we have one thing though we want to do. We want When we fill this formula down, we want to update all the X's and update all the Z's but we don't want to update this cell. So we're going to put our indicators of an absolute cell reference, which is a dollar sign in front of the F and a dollar sign in front of the three. And now when we go fill down, the formula will always go back to the cell F3 to find this multiplier. So now I'm going to scroll down here. And I'm going to say, control down or fill down. And so I have some issue here. I need to go check my formula.
Okay, so there was a slight mistake. I pushed the wrong button on the keyboard and the fill down did not occur correctly, but I've corrected that now. So this is my formula, F3 absolute cell times Z squared minus X squared. And I filled it down and I'm getting appropriate extremes here of 16 and uh, minus 16 for the Y values. So now I could just select all these Y values and go back and substitute them into multi-frame, but I'm actually going to select all of these because I happen to remember that in multi-frame they're all highlighted and that's going to make uh, pasting them in easier. I don't have to re-highlight all the Y values. So I'm going to say control copy. I've got all those and now I'm going to do control paste and it automatically pastes over all the highlighted cells. And now I go back to the frame window and it looks exactly as I would expect. So this is a much faster process because this grillage fe feature in multi-frame has allowed us to generate all the data points really quickly, both in multi-frame and then to export them quickly to Excel. So everything was done with this grillage feature, except that in Excel, we had to update the Y values in order to give uh, the curvature that we're looking for. That ends our second video on hyperbolic paraboloid vaults.